Dr. Jaffe, is there benefit to testing EPA or DHA levels? Uh, and is the omega-3 index an adequate test? Well, with regard to um, the beneficial omega-3 and your levels, please remember that these fats go to the cells. There's a little bit in traffic. You can measure a little bit in the blood in traffic, but how much EPA and DHA is in the traffic of the plasma or the blood does not give you any useful information to the best of my knowledge in regard to what's going on in the tissues. The omega-3 index is a very fine, easily available, inexpensive, global assessment of omega-3 adequacy. It does not differentiate whether your EPA or DHA is more or less, but it basically takes your EPA and DHA as a percentage of what's present, and more than 8% is desirable, and that's what you would achieve if you followed our plan the LRA testing, the eight predicted biomarkers, the four self-assessments. Um, <clears throat> people often ask me that question. Isn't there some way, saliva, urine, blood, um, sweat, tears, isn't there some way of accurately measuring the EPA and DHA? And there is, you can do a brain biopsy. I don't recommend it, but you could measure the EPA and DHA in brain or in biopsies. But essentially, that would be the only way of doing it, and then it would be qualitative, not quantitative. Although I will tell you that some researchers at very high expense have actually quantified in the biopsy the omega-3 uh, amounts, and specifically the EPA, DHA. So to give you a shorter answer to that interesting question, you can measure EPA and DHA in cells. So if you want to harvest red cells or white cells and then measure their membrane fatty acid composition, which is commonly done when looking for genetic errors of metabolism, but not commonly done otherwise. There are boutique, <clears throat> there are specialty reference labs that will measure membranes and they will give you about 40 different analytes. And what's important is how much short chain how much mid-chain, that is C16, C18 alkyls, and how much long-chain. But then, if you can, and they usually can, you get to look at how much oxidized, as in damaged fat there is, fatty acids, or protected. If you have enough antioxidants, ascorbate and others, you shouldn't have oxidized and damaged fats in your membrane. So there is a way of measuring, but not in the blood, and it's not easy, and it's not inexpensive. And then, in my experience, functional experience, <clears throat> the interpretation is brought to you by a lab that mostly studies errors of metabolism. And so the report either says we found an error of metabolism or we didn't. It doesn't tell you the meaning. It doesn't tell you the short chain fats actually alkalinize you and help soak up the acetate acid that is produced by metabolism. The long chain fats store energy, but they will contribute acid if you start burning them for fat. So yes, <clears throat> when I collaborated with the Heart Institute at NIH doing animal models of heart disease, Bob Peters spent his entire professional life I, uh, taking isolates that actually my lab made, but analyzing membranes from red cells, white cells, and platelets, and quantifying the um, elegant uh, distribution of fats you find, which I think is much more detailed and much less helpful uh, than just measuring the omega-3 index. So interesting question. Bottom line, measure the omega-3 index if your global assessment of omega-3 adequacy.